I can't beatbox. <laughs> I beg the difference. Oh, there you go. They don't pay you to beatbox, right? I don't. Don't pay me for anything. Let's be real. I'm just here with this beautiful face and beard. How's my hair? I think you just popped my neck, by the way, on that one. Um, that was awesome. Was <laughs> like, it? Yes, it was a great fight. Congratulations. Um, just how was it for you? <laughs> Dude, that was fun. That's what I like to do, man. Um, you know, I've been training for a really, really long time. Uh, and it's a lot of ups and downs in training, a lot of injuries, a lot of, you know, times where you have to dig deep into yourself and, you know, come to practice and get beat up every day. So I enjoy it. I learned to enjoy it. I learned to enjoy fighting. I learned to enjoy getting punched in the face. I learned to enjoy going into deep waters and seeing where, where I can go. You know, it's like you have a split moment in there where it's like, should I give up or should I keep going? And you know, you have something telling you like give up now and you have the other part telling you like, dude, don't give up, man. This is this is where you this is where you want to be. This is who you are. So in that fight, man, like that's what I want, man. I wanna sit there and slug it out. Doesn't matter how hard you hit, doesn't matter your technique. You know, Mike Tyson said once you get punched in the face, that goes out the window. Hundred percent true, man. Like I'm sitting there and we're over there in the, the practice room throwing those combinations, he's slick, like, oh, jab, let's step off the side, boom, you know, doing all that. The moment he hit me in the face, I was like, all right, we're banging it out. Let's see who has the tougher, the tougher will and the tougher want, so. Yeah, I guess, because uh, just as, a, as an observer, like, you seem to be able to grab some sort of energy or fighting spirit when you're, when both of you guys are just, look like you're running on fumes. Like, is that, where, is that just from the training? Is that just in you? Where does that come from? Well, my coach, Marv, who I love to hate, but I still love, puts me on this cable. Now, most of you guys, if you watch my Instagram stories and stuff, um, it is a, you know, there's a 100-pound cable or 200-pound cable. And he puts it on there, and he makes you go for 30 minutes nonstop. Now, you'll have a fresh guy jumping in at you, and they're throwing punches, and you're sitting there 30 minutes. doesn't matter if you have anything in you. These guys are coming after you to take your head off. So I've been in that situation throughout my whole camp. I've been beat up my whole entire camp. The thing is that helped me out is that I had to finish my 30 minutes and I was only seven minutes into my 30 minutes right there, you know, like, so that's how, uh, that's how I, I learned to deal with it. You know, it's just training the way that I'm gonna fight. When you're trading like that in the first round, like what's kind of like going in your in your in, in your head at that, in that kind of in that moment? Because it's like it's crazy. Like some of the kind of punches that you guys were swinging, like a split second, and you can connect with the chin, and it's all over, right? Yeah, that's possible. Um, I sit there and think, well, if he can hit me, I can hit him, but I just have to find a different angle to hit him. In. So I knew that if when I hit him, I knew that it hurt him when he tried to wrestle me. So I knew I was getting the better of the power. Um, and, you know, I, I just wanted to bang, so it just kept, every time he kept going in, he kept going for the shot, so I was like, all right, you know, I guess we're going to wrestle, but that's fine. I, I need to work on that. That's something I need to work on personally. Um, I used to wrestle, and I got away from that because I learned about striking, but this is the big leagues, man. I need, to, I need to get my wrestling game up, you know. I had a guy that doesn't wrestle take me down. That hurts. <laughs> it hurts. I'm sure you'll take the, the quick knockout, but are, is it fights like this that you, you like to take yourself to so you can push yourself to that limit? And do you like to just, because since it's such a grueling fight, you get to show so much of your heart and so much of your skill. Do you like fights like this better than maybe going in and getting a quick knockout? I like I like finishing the fight soon, yeah, for sure. I don't have this many fights like this in my life, you know. I don't want like CTE at the end of my time, like sitting there and not be able to pick up a spoon. Don't get me wrong, but I don't mind them. So. Now, I, I'm sorry, I was going to ask you about um, not CT in particular, but like, how are you feeling? Like, you're, I mean, I know you have some some um, some cuts and stuff, but is your I me? Mean, Dude, the, I got violated by the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my nose was broken. I, if you, I'll, I'll post pictures later. <laughs> my nose was crooked. I didn't know it, and he was like, "Oh, it's it's caved in." I'm like, "All right." He's like, "Well, I'm going to stick my finger in there and just pop it out." So he shoved his finger all the way up my nose, and like. Did something like, I don't know what he did, but it made a loud pop and I felt violated. But my nose is straight and I can breathe better. 
on, <laughs> on behalf of the uh, the MMA community on Twitter, there was a lot of chat about your beard that you'll probably see when you get your phone. Um, uh, how much work do you put into that thing? Uh, I was born like this. Um, <laughs> I, I go and get it cut and trimmed up because if I don't, it would just it would go crazy. And Tyron, like, he has a beautiful beard, and uh, I'm challenging. I, I need to know. It's dead serious. You guys are smiling right now. Oh. No, don't smile. <laughs> this is a better beard. Sorry. You may be the champion at 170, but I'm the champion of all UFC with this beard. So talk about a little bit of those vicious elbows that you were throwing there. Is that something that you were hoping that you'd be able to get to use in this in this fight? Or and when you do land one so flush, how good does that feel? Dude, it's it's awesome. Man, like I said, we, we train those elbows all the time. Marvin Eastman. Gosh, man, he's a, he's an amazing person. Um, he sits there and he shows me all these techniques in this arsenal, and he's only giving me this much. Like I, I only know basic. I haven't got into this like whole elaborate stuff. All these 16 points of elbows that I can throw, which most of you guys probably don't know, but it's it's awesome. I'm hitting pads every day, throwing these elbows. So when I actually got to unleash the elbow, which right now after you just said I hit elbows, I feel it right now, right when I moved it, but. Uh, it was, it's awesome, man. It felt great. I didn't know if they were hurting him, but I knew they landed. It, yeah, it seemed like that last elbow, let, um, you were throwing hooks, you threw that elbow. That's what let him do the, um, the double leg takedown. Um, when he came in and shot into you, did you feel like this, was, this is a desperate man right now? Yeah. Um, you, you got a striker wanting to shoot, which we kind of knew that. Um, we kind of knew he was going to shoot, but I, it didn't matter. Like... I'm ready to go anywhere. Um, I felt like I handled myself pretty well when he did take me to the ground. Uh, but again, that dude's, dude's strong, that dude has will, and he took the fight on short notice. He made the weight, like some opponents on this deal that didn't make the weight, but he made the weight, he took it on short notice. Dude, that, that guy is gonna be forever, I'll never forget him. He gave me this opportunity. I would not be here if it wasn't for Darren Stewart, so hats off to him. Is there someone that makes sense for you next? I don't really know. I don't know anybody in the UFC. Let's be honest. I don't know the, the whole ranking system. I don't know any of that. I just want to go for the gold. That's it. That's why we're here, right? We want that, that strap. And whoever we have to go to get that, then yeah. Yeah, I called out Rockhold and Whitaker. No one's going to get that. But hey, that's a goal, right? Are we not allowed to have goals here? So I don't know. Who, who do you want me to fight? That's a good question. Um... You know, that's where there's UFC matchmakers around to that, right. that deal out, right? Sean Shelby and Mick Maynard, they know what they're doing, and they know how to put in entertaining fights. Do you think they did well tonight with this card? Yeah. I think, I think so. it's awesome. We got some knockouts. Nice. We got some yeah. pretty wild fights tonight, and uh, it's still we have a few more fights left over, you know? How's your kind of, uh, to put a bow on it, you know, what's your experience been like here in Winnipeg? Dude, it's been amazing. When we came here on Saturday, me and my buddy Sean, and we have just been venturing out like it's cold. I love the cold. You know, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Missouri, by the way, not Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. So <laughs> I love that place. I love it. It's my, it's my home. But I live in Las Vegas now, so I don't see snow. So when we came out here, it was snowing, felt like a little kid. We walked out there. Yeah, it was cold. Don't get me wrong. Not going to, it's 20 degrees outside. It's pretty cold, but you bundle up. Um, we ventured out throughout the city. We looked at some stuff. Some of the food, questionable, suspect, but uh, some of the food that we had was really delicious. So Winnipeg's amazing, man. I want to come back here. So how do you celebrate the win? Uh, well, my family's in town, and that's all I really care to go see. Um, I really don't get to celebrate the win until I see my baby brother. Um, oh, man. That's one person I haven't seen in a while, and I'm kind of getting a little emotional. It's, I've been away from him for 13 weeks, so... I, I really want to go home to Kansas City, and I will for the holidays, and I'll see him. But I got my older brother, I got my dad here, my stepmom, my cousins, um, some good friends, and I got my cornerman here. So that's all I care about. I'm gonna, I can sit there by poolside drinking water, because I don't drink, but drinking water and enjoying it. That's, that's, that's a celebration to me. What's the kind of like, you know, obviously your, your brothers and there's a special connection there, but there's a, why did that make you kind of well up to kind of like see your brother after it's been so long? Have you got some sort of special bond with him? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Cuban, man. Right, we, right. We work tight. Yeah. Family means everything. Because at the end of the day, without these cameras here, without, you know, all these fans here, I have my family. They've been there. They knew who I was from the beginning, from before I fought. So they've been supportive of me the whole entire time. And that's all I care about.
Literally, if I went out there and lost tonight, guess what? Who do you think I'm going to go home to? Who do you think is going to come for me? Who do you think is going to sit there and still accept me? They're not going to turn their back on me. They're not going to say anything. So that's my celebration there. I do it for myself. I fight for myself and I enjoy it. But I have the support of my family and that's all I need. Have you got a chance to talk with them yet right after the win? No, I haven't. Um, you know, they're, they're texting my coaches right now. So I'm ready to have my dad down here. I want to see him because, you know, if you guys know my dad, like a lot of people in Kansas City know who my dad is. He does a bunch of uh, refereeing, and he's so into MMA. Um, I was the reason why he got into it. So to see that that look on his face after he knows his son won, it's it's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, hey, Dad, we're in the spotlight. That last name, Marquez, his last name, it's in the spotlight. So your dad was a referee? Yeah, uh, he does refereeing and judging. For MMA? Yeah, over oh, wow. there in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, so um, so are you, is this just like a, a family thing? Are you a family of fighters? Like, no, the, so <laughs> how it was, like, growing up being uh, Hispanic and everything, like, we always loved boxing, and we were all into boxing and enjoying that. So we'd have these huge parties at home, and, like, we're going crazy, we're cooking up pigs, we're doing all that good stuff, and we'll watch the fights. And then uh, after college, you know, I needed something, you know, wrestling. And I actually didn't never told my dad that I was gonna go to MMA. And I went to this place um, called, uh, at the time it was K2L Grindhouse. And I went there, and which today is Glory MMA and Fitness, uh, okay. owned by James Callis and Zach Cummings and Joe Wooster. Um, I went there and I started training for a long time. And before, a couple weeks before I had my first fight, I told my dad. <laughs> and then after my first loss, my dad was very angry because he's like the judge, he's like, or the ref said, hey man, like that was way too, way too soon so he decided to go to school like do all the classes do all the courses get into it then he became a judge and he's actually a really uh well-known judge in kansas city a lot of people know him um and uh that's how it is i mean we're a bunch of fighters but to answer your question after rambling on uh my family's cuban and uh they came over here uh like in the early 70s they came over here, so they've been fighting their whole entire life. They've been fighting to put food on the table. They've been fighting for a better life for me. So we are a family of fighters. You know, we come from poverty and we made something great from it. So that is what a true warrior is, is no matter what, not giving up and providing for your family. Congratulations, sir. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thank I appreciate it. All right. Now, now I want to meet you, Dad.